Um, thank you so much for having me here. It's really, it's really a delight. I can't believe what happened this morning. That was completely amazing. Um, <laughs> congratulations to the organizers and whatnot. I mean, to, to, ha to change someone's mind in real time and have him go off, and I, I really think something's going to happen. So, um, the thesis of my talk and of um, you know, all the stuff I, I, I do in this area is that verifiable isn't enough, we need verified. Um, and so the one way of framing this is, is what, what uh, David Wagner and I have called evidence-based elections. And the idea of an evidence-based election is that it's not enough for the local election official to say so-and-so won. It's not even enough for the local election official to say so-and-so won and actually be right about it. Um, the local election official ought to provide convincing evidence that so-and-so won. And it's all about the evidence. So this is, this is really where we're trying to go. So either they should be able to pre present convincing evidence they got it right, or admit that they can't. And if they can't, then we need to think about what the recourse is. Do you have a do-over? Do, do judges intervene? Exactly what happens. So what's convincing evidence? Well, trust me is not convincing evidence. Um, I used certified equipment is not convincing evidence. Um, there's no evidence of hacking is not convincing evidence, especially if nobody looked. Um, and, uh, okay, so we're, we're all laughing at this, but, um, but unfortunately it's kind of the state of things. So what do we need? We, we need uh, the voters to actually create a complete, durable, verified audit trail. Um, we need the local election official to care for that audit trail adequately to ensure that it's, it stays, uh, yeah, I spell accurate, so accurately, um, uh, remains complete and accurate. Um, and then to demonstrate that they have, they need to be able to provide affirmative convincing evidence that the audit trail is complete and intact. There are no laws on the books that I'm aware of anywhere, and correct me if I'm wrong, that require rigorous chain of custody in a way that is documented and checked in such a way to be able to show the public that these really are all the ballots, only the ballots, no ballots fell off a truck, no ballots fell on a truck, um, so forth and so on. <clears throat> so, and in order to do that requires, requires active, uh, a, 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 taking action, and I call a compliance audit, um, this process of doing um, ballot accounting, verifying seal numbers, verifying that things are sealed, making sure that ballots aren't left unattended, yeah, even behind a hurricane fence without a camera focused at the fence to make sure that nobody's messing with it. So we really need that, and I think we need that throughout the whole country. I'm not aware of any place that does it well. And again, if, I, if you do know a place that does, that does it well by statute or by regulation, I would love to get a copy of that um, so we can use it as a model. Um, and then finally, we've got to use that reliable paper trail to double check whatever else we did to come up with the election outcome. So even if we hand count the ballots the first time, we ought to double check the answer, at least, at least spot check the answer to make sure we got the answer right. If we used electronic equipment to tabulate things the first time, then we have a much bigger problem um, because it's so easy to have wholesale issues, whether they're caused by errors or deliberate fraud once you're involving computers. Um, so the, the double checking I think is important whether you do a hand count or a machine count the first time, but it's especially important if you do a machine count the first time. Um, a full hand count is a way of the paper is a way to double check the first count, however you got it, but risk limiting audits are a way of pointing out that that, isn't, that, that may be unnecessarily expensive. An appropriately designed audit can detect and correct wrong outcomes from the paper, provided the paper is reliable and trustworthy. Um, currently, risk limiting audits are the gold standard. I'll talk a little bit about what they are. Um, but uh, is, is there anybody in the room who hasn't heard the term risk limiting audit? A couple of people, okay. Is there anybody who, who sorry, a few people? You haven't? Okay. I'll talk about it in, in, in some detail, just trying to get an idea of, of the sense of, of what's going on here. So a few people. Um, is there anyone here who feels like they have a pretty good handle on what they are and how they work? Okay. A few people. Great. Okay. So um, the notion of evidence is that we have auditability plus some actual auditing, right? It's not enough to have auditable elections. You actually have to look at them. So what do we want audits to do? And this, for me, thinking hard about this question was what, what led to risk-limiting audits. So we have California's 1%. We were talking about that earlier today and the effect that AB 840 would have on it. Um, what do we want the audit to do? 
right? So we have these rules that say you should go forth and look at 1% of the precincts and make sure that you've hit all the contests. And if you haven't, maybe pick an extra precinct that contains those contests. And you look at it by hand and you count it. And you've got the official results and you've got these things you did by hand. And now what? What does the audit do? Right? By California statute, local elections officials just report that. They report what they got when they did the hand tally, um, and they report what the, uh, what the discrepancies were. There's some notion of explaining the discrepancies, but there isn't a notion of, well, in light of the discrepancies you saw, are you comfortable with the election outcome? Did something go wrong? Is this all right? So the audit has no teeth. The audit doesn't have the power to correct the outcome if the outcome is wrong. We certainly wouldn't want to correct the outcome on the basis of looking at just 1% of precincts, right? We, in order to correct the outcome, you have to count all the paper by hand. You don't want to disenfranchise the majority on the basis of a statistical fluke. But how do we do that, right? What do we want the audit to do? So the, what a risk-limiting audit does is, is um, yeah, um, it says, what I want the audit to do is, when I'm done with it, I want to have confidence that the outcome is right. right. How do I get confidence that the outcome is right? It might be by counting all the ballots by hand. And in fact, a full manual tally is a risk-limiting audit. It's just not the most efficient risk-limiting audit a lot of the time. Okay? So if, if you start with the idea that what an audit ought to do is give you strong evidence that the outcome is right, or lead to a full hand tally to correct the outcome if the outcome was wrong, then what you get is a risk-limiting audit. Okay? And it's not one way of doing it. There are infinitely many ways of doing a risk-limiting audit, one of which is a full hand tally. So a risk-limiting audit is not a thing. It's a property that some procedures have. The property that if the outcome is wrong, why ever it's wrong, doesn't matter why, Provided, it, provided the way that it's wrong did not corrupt the ballot trail, right? You're, it, the risk limiting audit relies on the integrity of the paper trail just as a full hand count relies on the integrity of the paper trail, right? Whatever you're, you're going back, to, your, your process can't be any better than the data that are going into it, right? So if you have a reliable audit trail, then, and if the, the tally, the aggregation, the reporting went wrong for any reason, including deliberate malfeasance or fraud, random errors, misconfiguration machines, whatever it was, if an you know, um, um, infinitely intelligent, omniscient, malicious adversary was trying to hide errors from you in the most um, difficult to discover possible way and knew how you were going to audit, you'd still have a 95% chance of correcting the outcome if that person altered the outcome, right? If, you were, if you're working at a risk limit of 5%. Okay, so this does not rely on the assumption that the problems are random or that the failures are random or anything else. It allows, it, no matter how things broke down, you have a big chance of correcting it. And the chance is a chance that ought to be in legislation. So a, a good, <clears throat> good risk-limiting audit law would say, you shall audit in such a way that if the outcome is incorrect, there is at most a 1% chance that you will not correct the outcome in the course of the audit. Right? That would be a, a good law. And it wouldn't specify how you do that. How you do that, there might be a safe haven method that's in regulations um, or, or something like that, a safe harbor uh, method. But typically, th the details of what calculations you do, how you do the sampling, so forth, that's, I think, better left to regulations in most places. There are, pla there are states in which people distrust their state elections officials to the point that they wouldn't want that left to the SOS to, to um, flesh out. But um, uh, if you put it in law, then when you find a better method, you will have to change the law to use the better method, where if it's in regulations, it's a lot easier to, to alter things. All right, so RLA, WTF. Um, all right, so it's a simple idea. The audit has a large chance of requiring a full hand count of the ballots if that would show that the outcome is wrong. Um, it's not a method, it's a property some methods have. You gotta have voter ver verifiable, durable, tamper, evident record. For now, that means paper. Maybe someday there will be a digital alternative. There is not yet. <clears throat> um, a full hand count is a risk-limiting audit, um, but there are some methods that are more efficient. The, the limitations on the efficiency depend on your voting system. So any voting system that has paper, provided you keep track of the paper and have it reasonably well organized, you can do a ballot polling audit. A ballot polling audit is like an exit poll in an election 
but instead of asking people who they voted for, you ask the ballots who they, who they are voted for. So unlike people, the ballots have to talk to you and they have to tell you the truth. Um, so if you draw a big enough random sample of ballots, you can get evidence from that about who actually won. Now, if I took a random sample of 10 ballots and found six for um, uh, contestant A and four for contestant B, candidate B, that would not be compelling evidence that candidate A won. But if I drew 6,000 and found 600 versus 400, that would be. So at what point is the evidence strong enough to convince you that candidate A really won? Well, the most efficient methods for doing risk limiting audits make that decision adaptively. They look at what you've seen so far, they say, do I have convincing evidence that to continue to look at more ballots would be pointless because all that's gonna happen is I'm gonna confirm the outcome I already have. Or not, if I don't have convincing evidence that the outcome is right, I keep looking. So it sets things up as a, as a statistical hypothesis test, but in a way that's backwards from how most people think about it. What you do, you start by assuming the outcome is wrong in a way that you don't know, and you start collecting evidence, and, in, and in, until and unless you become convinced that your assumption that the outcome is wrong is itself wrong, you keep collecting more evidence, right? So evidence is not the absence of a smoking gun. You know, evidence is the, the absence of, 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 of a murder, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you, you make sure nothing, nothing actually went wrong. So that ballot polling risk limiting audit you can do provided you have paper and keep it organized. A comparison risk limiting audit makes a stronger demand on the voting system. The voting system has to tell you what it got as the tally for some collections of ballots. It might be all the ballots cast in a precinct or all the ballots that were in a particular batch that arrived at about the same time were tallied together vote by mail. Ideally, the equipment would tell you how it interpreted each piece of paper in a way that you can go back and find the corresponding piece of paper. So the, the most easily auditable voting systems create a cast vote record for every ballot and do it in such a way that you can link it to the actual piece of paper. So you can check it on, an, on a ballot by ballot basis. If you can do that, the sample sizes that you need to look at for risk limiting audit are typically much, much smaller than they would be for any other way of doing this on the assumption that the outcome is correct. If the outcome is incorrect, then your risk limiting audit, however it is you're doing it, has a big chance of requiring a full manual tally, right? So risk limiting audits, save time when the outcome is right. They do not save any time when the outcome is wrong. They lead to a full hand count, right? This is not, that is not labor saving. <clears throat> um, okay, batch level risk limiting audits, like reporting at the level of precincts and then going and hand tallying the ballots in a precinct, turn out to be relatively inefficient. And in fact, ballot polling, that method where you kind of just pull ballots at random and don't compare them to anything, is more efficient under most circumstances. That's what we found in the California pilot um, and so right now, I don't think that batch level comparison audits have a future, um, except they might have a future in Rhode Island, which just passed a law requiring risk limiting audits next year. And I get the impression that may be what they have in mind um, for want of an alternative, but what, we'll, we'll see where that goes. All right, so I know that there are people in this room who, who believe that um, ballot images, digital images of the ballots may be um, a way to get more election integrity, verifiability, transparency. Um, if we could publish pictures of every ballot, then the public could tally them for themselves, look at things, so forth and so on. And I think there's merit to that, but I think that at the end of the day, how do you know whether the pictures, the images are complete and accurate, right? How do you know that every, so I, I, I'm calling these pictures, they're not pictures. They are digital scans, they are, they are digital data, and they are highly processed digital data. They are, people tend to think of them as if you made a photograph on film of the ballot, but they're not that. And I'm gonna show you some slides from Hari Hursty's talk at EVN a couple of years ago. So, but first of all, how do you know that they're complete and accurate in the first place? How do you know that somebody didn't forget to scan a box of ballots, which happens? Or scan a box of ballots twice, which happens? Or that the scanner actually picked up all of the marks on the ballot and that it wasn't in a color of ink that the scanner ignores or something like that. Well, you need to do some auditing of the images against the paper, right? That's one way to do it. You, you check some fraction of images to see whether, you know, is this piece of paper accurately reflected in the images? Is there actually a piece of paper that corresponds to this? They, how much of, audit, of auditing of that kind would you need to do? Well, the answer is more than you would need to do to do a risk limiting audit in the first place by just relying on the paper. So that extra step of trying to 
develop trust in the images to tell that you can tally from that is more work than it is to just do a risk limiting audit against the paper in the first place. Okay, um, I wanted to switch to uh, these, this, so I'm just absolutely literally stealing these slides from Hari. This is his presentation. I didn't even, um, how do I view? Um, it, it, is play gonna make it big? Okay, all right. So these are Hari Hursty's slides from a couple of years ago. Um, the commercial off-the-shelf scanners, which many voting systems rely on, and the Humboldt Transparency Project is, is using, uh, uh, and so forth. So um, they have you know, bugs and features. So this is an example. The Xerox bug was discovered in 2013. So even when you tell the scanner not to enhance the image, it does it anyway. Now this is not OCR. This isn't optical character recognition. This is messing with the image at the level of pixels. Um, so. Here's an example of digits um, coming out of the scanner. And um, this is them uh, after processing. So notice that the, the 54 comma 8, sorry, 54 comma 6 became, 54 comma 6 became 54 comma 8. Okay, here's, here this is highlighted. So the, the left panel is the, a raw image. The right panel is this after running through a scanner. With, with image enhancement nominally turned off. It's changing digits. Okay? Everybody sees this? All right. Um, so this could be a problem if you're relying on uh, inter you know, interpreting marks on the ballot, even if you're doing it by eye afterwards. Um, punch hole removal. This is another really interesting thing. Uh, all commercial off-the-shelf uh, modern you know, scanners have the ability to fill in punch holes. And you know, if you put in a piece of three-ring binder paper, um, it knows that you don't want those big black circles, which look an awful lot like black ovals on voting you know, on ballots, to be filled in, right? So what does it do? Um, this is an example of, uh, of a ballot uh, hand-marked that just happens to have some voting targets over on the left side, roughly where punch holes would be in a piece of paper. So you run this through the scanner, and what does it do? It removes the votes. Okay? You are not going to detect this by looking at the image unless you have the corresponding paper, right? So you can't just rely on the images as an accurate representation of the underlying paper. There are all kinds of things that can and will go wrong. <clears throat> okay. That's uh, as much of Hari's talk as I'll give. Um, and I'm probably running out of time. Um, okay, so what's missing to be able to have risk limiting audits everywhere, have, have evidence-based elections everywhere? So whether you're going to audit or do a full manual count, you gotta have paper. And roughly a quarter of the country is still voting on technology that doesn't create a paper trail. So that's first step. But the second step is we really need to have provable chain of custody of this paper. And again, there are just countless examples where this fails. Um, one of the things that happens with some regularity in audits, um, whether they're based on rescans or, or something else, is they discover a box of ballots that wasn't scanned. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it's, this is the kind of procedural failure that does occur. Um, there are wonderful examples from um, uh, Rod, Rod, uh, Johnston. Um, is Roger? Is that, uh, yeah. Um, he, he does uh, security at national labs or did security at national labs for nuclear material and things like that. He loves thinking about little security puzzles. And he looked at elections, and one of the things he noticed in one jurisdiction was this wonderful box of ballots covered all over in seal tape, clearly tamper evident, until you flip the box over and you can open it from the bottom, which has no seal tape on it, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, w we have problems with these procedures. I mean, I, I mean, I'm very grateful to local elections officials who have let me play in their backyards and kitchens and, and whatever. But by the same token, what happened in more than one place was they, they just sort of opened the room where the ballots are kept and said, go do your audit, right? And so I'm, to take off the tape if you need to, do whatever you need to do, you know, so forth and so on. It's like, I'm really, really grateful, but I'm a little, you know, it makes me a little uncomfortable um, that there aren't procedures for logging every time a seal is opened, uh, having numbered seals, not generic seal tape, um, recording all of this stuff, and then, and then having someone actually check, right? Having, having a log of this um, so that you really know what's, what's going on. So provable chain of custody, I think, is absolutely crucial. We need it whether we're talking about um, manual counts or audits against the paper. 
Um, and then the ballots need to be organized. And you know, th those of you who are approximately my age may remember public service announcements. Um, you know, it's after midnight, where are your children? Um, and it's like, it's the morning after the election, where are your ballots? Do you know where your ballots are? Uh, and I think that this is like the meme that we really, you know, if you're a local election official, the one thing that you ought to be really, really good at is keeping track of paper. And you ought to be able to say, I have this many ballots cast in all, they are bundled into this many bags, one, the first bag is labeled 1A, it's supposed to have 273 ballots in it, right? This, here's bag B, it's supposed to have 192 ballots in it, so forth and so on. That's called a ballot manifest. And it's crucial to be able to draw a random sample of ballots that you understand how they're organized. And having rules and regulations that require local elections officials to keep things organized and be able to say, this is how many ballots I have and this is where to find them, um, is, is just kind of step zero. <clears throat> okay, if we have those things, then we can do a ballot level, uh, we can do a uh, ballot polling audit or we can do a full hand count, or we can do whatever. But without those things, then we're not, none of this is really grounded in truth, right? So we really, really need that stuff. Um, uh, I'm not, I should probably, I've, I've spoken for more than my time. I should shut up. I should let people talk. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <clears throat>